Hey, how's it going guys? In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use Python to set your Google Cloud Storage files public. Alright, so this is going to be a pretty handy script if you want to quickly turn on and turn off public access to multiple files or even the entire bucket in Google Cloud Storage. Alright, so uh, let's dive into the tutorial. So first we want to uh, navigate to our Cloud Storage in Google Cloud Console. Now right here I have three buckets. I'm going to use my uh, public demo bucket as demonstration. I'm going to click into the bucket. So before we can set a bucket or any file in the bucket public, we need to set the permission manually first. So click on the permissions tab and turn off the public access prevention. So this is just one of the security settings in Google Cloud Storage to make sure that you don't accidentally uh, share any file public. All right, so let's dive into the Python script. I'll be using Google Cloud Storage API to uh, manipulate the settings. So make sure that you have the uh, Google Cloud Storage service enabled first. And you also need to install the uh, Google Cloud Storage Python library. You can use the command pip install Google Cloud Storage uh, to install the library. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, create the Google Cloud Storage client instance. Now here I'll go ahead and uh, create a variable to store the bucket name. And the bucket name is going to tie to the uh, bucket that I want to set uh, the entire files in this bucket public. And the way how we're going to do that is by creating a new uh, assets policy which is going to be the old users policy. All right, so here uh, I'm creating a list and I named the list ACL assets. And ACL stands for assets control list. Inside this list, I'm providing the old users uh, principle. Now to make the bucket public. So here let me insert nodes, make a bucket public. And it's going to be make an object or file public or private. All right, so to make a bucket public, first we need to create a bucket object that ties to uh, the bucket entity. In this case, will be the public demo bucket. So from the client instance, I'm going to use the get bucket method and providing the uh, bucket's name to create the bucket's reference. Then we need to create a new policy that we are going to assign to the uh, demo bucket. All right, so if we look at this uh, code block here, so from the uh, demo bucket object, I'm using the get IM policy to turn the current policy settings. And here we need to set the request policy version to three. And that's just what the documentation uh, says when you need to uh, alter the uh, policy setting or when you want to uh, add or remove a new policy. And let me delete this line here. Now from the public access policy object, so this object contains the uh, policy setting of the uh, demo bucket. We want to add a new policy to the existing policy and it's going to be the old users policy. So here from public access policy dot bindings, we want to append a new policy. And using the append method, we are going to provide addition with two uh, key pair values. So the first uh, key pair is going to be the role that we want to assign to uh, this uh, member. Then we're going to uh, set the members. So members basically are the entities that we are going to grant this rule permission to. Then we're going to update the policy, use the set IM policy method. Then we'll provide the uh, updated policy access policy object. Now here, let me go into the bucket itself. All right, so if we look at the uh, policy setting, so currently the bucket is still set to private. Now if I go ahead and uh, run this code block, oh, I forgot to create a bucket. 
Now let me go ahead and uh, run line 6 all the way to line 19. And this line here will return a IAM policy option. So it's basically the update policy settings that we store in an object. Now going back to the uh, browser, I'm going to refresh the page. Now here you can see that uh, because we are setting the bucket as public accessible, so therefore we are basically making all the files in this bucket uh, public available. Now if I want to uh, turn off the public access or make the bucket private, unfortunately I don't think we can use the API to do that. So here we need to uh, turn off the public access uh, manually. So first, we want to go back to the permissions tab. And here I'm going to uh, basically remove the old users uh, principle. And that will make the uh, files private again. Now I want to move on to another example. This time I want to make uh, individual files private, not just all the files. And to do that, so here we need to go back to the buckets permissions uh, tab. And from access control, we need to make sure that we set the uh, setting to uh, find gained. At this point, my bucket is still uh, private. Now to make individual files uh, public, so here I'm going to create a list. And I'll name the list blob names. So assuming that I want to make uh, the first two files, which are these two CSV files public. So I'm going to simply copy the uh, object name. Then I'm going to insert a loop. I'm going to say for blob name in blob names. And while the uh, demo bucket object is still tied to the uh, bucket itself, I'm going to copy paste demo bucket object inside the loop. And I'll reference the uh, file by referencing the blob method. Then I'll provide the uh, object's name. And I'll name the output as blob. So that'll create the reference to the object itself. Now to make a file public, so here we want to uh, reference the blob object dot make public. And I'll set a file public. So if I go ahead and run this loop, oh, I forgot to create the list. Now let me try again. Now if I go back and refresh the page. And I'll make the uh, two CSV files public. And if I want to make those two files private again, I can simply uh, change the make public method to make private method. And I'll run the loop again. Refresh the page. And I'll turn off the uh, public access to the two CSV files. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, see you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.